Hello and welcome to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I have a great show lined up for you today. In the first half hour you're going to meet Penny Simmons who is the founder and CEO of Penny Loafers Shoe Shine Company. Uh, really quite a successful uh, entrepreneurial story so you're not going to want to miss this one. Later in the segment before we take a break I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top tip on living a successful life, the best life possible, and you are going to hear pennies. In the second half of the show, we're going to be talking to a singer-songwriter about using music to uh, generate interest and move people with regard to social causes, so stay tuned. My first guest, Penny Simmons, is the founder and CEO of Penny Loafer Shoeshine Company, a chain of upscale shoeshine kiosks in Toronto. Penny and her 16 valets have polished the footwear of more than half a million clients, from prime ministers and business leaders to media and sports personalities. She's been nominated for awards, and she's, her story has also been published in, in a book, Live Your Dreams, Doctor's Orders. Welcome to the show, Penny Simmons. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Shannon. It's great having you here. I was like getting an opportunity to tell my story. Well, you have quite a story, and it's a very inspiring one. Um, and your career, I mean, today, obviously, you are running this a, a hugely successful company, Penny Loafer Shoeshine Company, a very unique company. Um, but you haven't always been doing this. Your career began doing something very, very different. And you started off, I believe, as a secretary and worked your way into uh, to become a stockbroker. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about uh, your early career and what brought you to the place that you are today. Well, first of all, you have to recognize when I was a little girl, I never dreamed I'd grow up to shine shoes. Because back then it was hairdresser, Teacher, secretary, lawyer. lawyer. No, no, no. That was, no, not in the, not in the stars. And airline stewardess. So uh, I left home and school at an early age. And fortunately, I had typing that did uh, get me by for a long time, doing secretarial administrative work. And oddly enough, I made sure I was always well-groomed head to toe, which got me in those interviews or leaving a good impression. And then, just if chance happened, fate, I ended up in a stock brokerage company. But all along, on the side, I also had a catering business, with, uh, started with a gal pal of mine and we did waitressing on the side at night. And I just kept going on soul searching in life until I got to a point where I was just moving from job to job to job and I wasn't moving ahead. So I finally got, I'll say, backed into a corner and I had to look ahead, what am I going to do? I tried so many different professions and utter frustration. Uh, I did a uh, speaking engagement at one of the colleges a few years ago in the entrepreneurial studies class and their topic was nature or nurture but I said no no there are three ends there's nature nurture and necessity and right. that's what made me go through career counseling and then continue seeking my ambitions my passion. So was it um you, know, you were feeling unfulfilled and you were looking for f fulfillment or was it um, you know just trying something new um, I mean you had a few different uh, careers um, what sort of was propelling you to try different things there was something inside of me that was saying this isn't right, right I shouldn't okay. be just getting by in life and that's all I was doing I was just getting by just asking for enough or accepting less and there was something that was burning inside of me that this wasn't right. And I didn't have great self-esteem. I didn't think I was very smart. Those were unfortunately messages I grew up with. But something bothered me inside. And that's going to be part of my message later on. And so, you know, years later, you started uh, Penny Loafer Shoeshine Company. What sparked you to start a shoe shining company? Well, I had again reached a point where I was frustrated. I just finished a um, contract position with uh, one of the telecom companies, and I knew things were never working out. They weren't the right fit. Pardon me. 
So I was away on a midweek sabbatical with a couple of gal pals in March of 1994, having done career counseling uh, two, three years, or about two years earlier. And the answer came out, oh, so have your own small business. And I thought, but doing what? So I had to keep my, my mind, my heart, my eyes, my ears open to any possibility that clearly having my own business was a way to go. But what that would be, I didn't know. So in fact, I had been at a trade show in the US in September 1993 when someone told me about a shoe shine business down there. And so I tried to make this into the short story yeah. and was a, an exhibitor, a fellow exhibitor at this trade show where I was helping a friend out with her product. And he had found out that I was looking for a business of my own. And he one day came up to my booth and he said, oh my gosh, I was just getting a shoe shine at such and such a booth and there were girls doing it. They were doing it with their bare hands. They included a foot massage and people were jammed into the booth. And there's a business you can do. I said, what were you smoking in the men's room? <laughs> I literally, I thought, I've, I've been a stockbroker. And at that point, I'd also had some international marketing under my belt and quite literally had been in consulates in Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, any number of places. And I thought, never do that. And he handed me a business card from the company. I put it in a bag of papers. I got home, I put it into the recycling bin. So I think this story can meander, so you can feel free to cut me off. But um, it was about eight months later when I was on this midweek sabbatical with friends and I was just going through my mind, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I mean, the age of 40 was coming up, but I'm not talking, you know, the clock was ticking, but not biological. It was, what am I going to do to have a savings account? Because right. I had nothing. All oh, right, yeah. I had nothing, no support. It, it would be interesting to interview the entrepreneurs you do to find out who had spousal support, who had a golden handshake, uh, a nest egg. I had nothing. So you had only yourself to rely on. Yes, that was it. Yeah. That was it. So um, anyway, coming back from this uh, little getaway, I was just feeling so stressed. And suddenly the results of my career counseling came up and this shoe shine business and the strengths and weaknesses that had been unveiled in the career counseling. And I thought, my gosh, it's a perfect fit. And I blurted out, I'm going to start a chain of shoe shines. And my, one of my gal pals was driving, and I don't much like her driving. She said, that's nice. And that was, it was at that point also, I have to tell you, where my analogy is that I found my keys. Have you ever gone out or prepared to go out, be it for vacation, a day, a week, now, whatever it is, you've got everything together except you can't find your keys. Right, yeah. And you need those for either locking the house or starting your car. And then as soon as you put your hand down on them, your search is ended and off you go. That was how powerful it was for me. So it all clicked for you then? It did. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, isn't it interesting that your name is Penny? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just perfect. This is, yeah. It just, you know, lends itself so well to, to creating a company with shoes, penny loafers. I mean, it yeah. makes a whole lot of sense. Well, when you can tie in your name yeah. to a business and also what you're doing, it's fun. bonus. So something in there said, yes, um, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and did you think, what, am I crazy at this I, stage? Or did it just really felt? It, it just felt right. Right. It absolutely felt right. And in that moment when I announced this to uh, my friend as she, we were driving, we were just getting ready to cross the border. It was also almost in my mind's eye that I was zipping through the underground, the path system, and I thought, the path "This really of, of Tor yes, Toronto, yes, right, underground." And I just city. thought, "There's nothing like <laughs> yeah. this other right. than in the barber shop or in a shoe repair." And this was going to be a chain of standalone uh, shoe shine kiosks. So I thought, "The market is there." I just I didn't even research it. I just jumped on it. So there's some intuition. Oh, as but well, it was but so powerful. Yeah. So powerful. 
So you started the company, um, and you know, just, just tell us a little bit about uh, Penny Loafer Shoeshine Company, and, and, and obviously, and, and what you do, what the services are. Well, really, it's pretty simple. We we clean and polish the shoes. We're in the feel good business. Right. You know, right now we've gone through a bit of an economic uh, downturn. Yes. For the first few days after the, the bottom kind of fell out and came back and forth. Our numbers, our customer counts, we're a little bit up and down, but we're back up there because we're still that, that getaway that oh, I need to get away and breathe and relax, that the people still come to us and they've got to be treated with a smile, friendly conversation. And then we also get hired though for trade shows, uh, for doing special events in a trade show booth. We're a traffic builder, uh, weddings, bar mitzvahs, uh, cocktail parties, book launches, any number of things. And I've got eight foot high shoe shine chairs that I had built in 1994. And then now I also do my keynote speaking, but pretty much a, a niche market. Now, okay, I have to ask this question. Who's the most famous person whose shoes you have shined? Do you know that, the only reason that's a, a tough answer for me you don't always recognize the people that you're meeting. Right. I mean, hey, it was pretty cool having David Foster. I, okay. I really did enjoy that. Yeah. And uh, I understand from one of my staff that Erin Brockovich came by a few years ago when she was in town. And yes, you get the prime minister, as I have uh, five uh, former prime ministers, and Paul Martin before he became one. But I, yeah, I think, yeah, but we're at about yeah. five, I think. Wow. And. One of the most interesting moments I think that I had though was back in um, February, about two years ago, and I was with a new recruit, young gal. So we didn't have anyone and I looked and Joe Clark walked in. I said, oh, Mr. Clark, I, have under I knew he came to my business, but I'd never personally served him because I'm not always on the front lines. So I said, hop aboard and getting ready to polish him, but I was also showing him how to tie his shoelaces. I have a little video. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's, it's terrific, I call it. Right. Yeah. And uh, anyway, just starting with him, and I looked and I said, Mr. Mulroney, come on in. Wow. How, I don't care about your politics. How interesting is well, that? Well, I don't care about your politics, but what a cool job to be in a room that's maybe 10 feet by 6 feet and be sitting with two historic figures and just shooting the breeze and they're talking about the wife and kids and uh, really you, a lot of fun. Do you have, um, uh, I mean, is it more men that, that use your services? I mean, I know you've got three kiosks in Toronto. I mean, if we talk about you know, the business people downtown, is it more men? If you give me an extra half hour, I could have a fine time telling women why they have to get their shoes cleaned right. and more men. Yes, it is. And okay. the people I trained with in the States, same thing. The demographics just don't change. And it's really a pity. Don't, just don't think about it as something you're doing for aesthetics, but you're cleaning to get longer life, and the cleaning and polishing shows the shine, and that tells people you're clean from head to toe. Well, we are going to take a quick break. This means it's my good to know minute. And I know, Penny, that you've got a fantastic tip for the viewers. Clearly from what I've said, you, you have to listen to your intuition. And most of all, you've got to believe in yourself. I think that was my, my downfall in life. I didn't believe enough in me. And put aside the naysayers. It's one thing to take it in, but who's to say your thoughts are wrong? They're just thoughts. But when you follow your intuition and your instincts and your brilliance shines through, then you can affect and inspire the lives of others. And that's important to me. Thank you, Penny Simmons. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, more with Penny Simmons, founder and CEO of Penny Loafers Shoe Shine Company. So stay right there. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and my guest is Penny Simmons, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Penny Loafers Shoe Shine Company, based in Toronto. Um, now, you are also known as the mayor of the Path. Mm -hmm. The Path being the uh, you know shops and restaurants underneath uh, the city of Toronto. 
it's shameless self promotion. <laughs> it's all it is. I, How do I, you I came up with the idea yeah. because I've uh, I started working the path. Gosh, when I was about 25, right? And I uh, was in the hospitality industry and would occasionally go and fetch some of the group tours from their hotels to bring them to the dinner theater where I was the group sales manager. And uh, actually lost a busload of seniors one night, and I had to go up and find them on the street. Anyway, I've always been passionate about it, as uh, also as a member of the tourism. Uh, Tourism Toronto, I just don't think it gets the promotion that it deserves. Okay. And I'd in fact st uh, set out to investigate how to bring the the different vendors and so on in the entire pass system together. And then I had an opportunity in a, a Globe and Mail interview of saying that I was the self-proclaimed mayor of the path, but it came from meeting the mayor of Wawa, Ontario. I said, <laughs> I said, listen. I've been, and that was doing a right, trade yeah, show in Shoeshine, yeah. and there were all these mayors from across the, the country. And I said, So I've been thinking of running for mayor of the path. You said, Just go out and declare it. I said, You mean you don't have to go and get someone? No, he said, Just say, I'm the mayor. That's what I did. I went door knocking and became the mayor of Wawa. So you never know where you're going to get your inspiration. And hey, I get to talk to so many people and, and share ideas. So, so you became the, uh, the mayor of the path? And everybody who has shops and restaurants down there knows you? Well, they don't really, other than oh, okay. by reputation. Right, I have yeah, yeah. no ribbon-cutting ceremonies as yet, but I, I had a chance with our former mayor to get a photograph, and I had him as the upstairs mayor, and I was the downstairs mayor. Now, your story um, has been published. I mean, you've had a lot of some you know, media interviews over the years. Um, your success story is, is, is getting out there more and more now. Um, but you, your story has also been published in a book called Live Your Dreams, Doctor's mm -hmm. Orders. So how did that come to be? Well, I, I guess uh, through networking and there was a gentleman, Dr. Samuel Gerstein, who was relating uh, career happiness and to, to health, for example. And that's, right. that's in the nutshell. Yeah. And uh, he was directed to me. So he ended up profiling uh, 40 Canadians. I was fortunate to be one of them. People who had come overcome adversity of some kind, typically there was a bit financial, emotional, or, or physical. And in mine, I, I case I, I don't hide it, it was, I'll say emotional, that lack of self-belief and that struggle to overcome that, that lifelong struggle. So that was a real treat. That was a real treat. And if, I think you should uh, go ahead and buy the book too. I, I meant to bring one for you, but you'd have 39, maybe 40, fabulously inspirational stories. Yeah, no, that sounds you know fantastic. In terms of your story that's in the book, um, uh, you know, what what is the sort of the key lesson or the key um, uh, learning that came out of it for you? For me, it was illuminating that uh, you know, I, I persevered right? and yeah. I'm, I'm pretty strong in that regard and, and didn't give myself enough credit I don't think and just picking myself up, picking myself up over and over again and the, the strength that it took to finally start believing in myself and I, I still have those self doubts that I have to ch -ch 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 What do you do when slack. you have the self doubt? I mean I'm sure that every entrepreneur uh, anyone who's got a dream, who's stepping into their dream, whatever it might be, must have self-doubt. Uh, this sort of neg negative chatter at the back of the brain saying, no, you can't do it. Who are you to do it? Yes, and I've, I've had a lifetime of that, and some people are blessed not to. I think that's when uh, you have to sit back and, and really look at your accomplishments. You know, when, when you uh, are in the, the, the other working world, when you're working for someone, you should keep a resume, say, up to date. But sit down there and write down those accomplishments and then you can think when it comes time for your raise, hey, you know what, I did this, or you know what, I, I am okay. So even if I have those moments of self-doubt, maybe too I, I count my blessings. Count your blessings, it's really important, yeah. isn't and, it? And try and do something for someone else too. To, and if I can bring joy or something positive to someone else's life, that helps bring me around too and say, you know what, you're okay, you're okay. And so then that sort of helps to relieve some of that, that doubt. 
as well. It does, and when yeah. you have a, another great idea, maybe not the big picture idea, but just something small maybe you can do in your business or your life to make an improvement, and Val said, that's pretty darn clever. And small things, the small things can, can mean a lot. Now, you know, your business, um, Penny Loafer Shoeshine Company, it is the only business model like it in the country. Um, but surely there must have been a risk of creating something that hasn't, that isn't before you. What, what was that risk for you that you took? The, the risk for me is, we touched on earlier, I didn't have the funds to keep me going. And I didn't really think there was going to be a big risk. I cleared out my savings to, number one, I paid a, a firm in the U.S. to consult with me and teach me their business. And that was a story in itself. And then I had this first chair built and I thought, oh, it's going to be, a, it's going to be so easy to get this thing up and running. I couldn't get a landlord in this city to talk to me. And so the risk was that I was going to be stuck with this eight foot high shoe shine chair, which when I finally did get up and running, people would point and laugh at me and I just thought, I can always chop it up for kindling. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Because it was, it was a really rough start. It took yeah. a good year to get it up and running. Right. A lot of rejection, a lot of naysayers, and I still persevered. I just knew it would work. It worked in the U.S. It had to work here eventually. Was there a day that you wanted to just give up and say, that's enough? There was a day I came home and I literally cried. I'd finally gotten to see one landlord, and all he said was, I, I just don't get why you're doing this. Why don't you give it up and get a real job? So now that's after about oh, 16, 20 phone calls trying to get someone to talk to you for getting a permanent location. I couldn't give it away for special events, not at all. And I'd say, I'll be, I'll be in your booth for free just to get out there. And anyway, after that meeting, I literally came home and I, I cried, but I got up the next day. And of all things, I thought of Sylvester Stallone and all the rejection he'd had for Rocky. And uh, just, I, what's his quote? When I, I treat rejection as not a not a uh, uh, not as rejection, but rather as a bugle blowing in my ear to get up and, and get going. Right, a motivator. Yeah. Well, there's something else that was important to you. A movie called "It Should Happen to You." That was uh, something that you saw when you were young, and and that's been sort of a driving force for you. The message in this movie. Well. Um, for my, my one minute, my 60 seconds, I, I forgot to put in my words what was said in the secret, but if you have a thought, if a thought comes to you and you think you can, then you can. And in the secret, uh, if anyone's seen or sure, read the that. Law of attraction. Right, yeah. right, law of attraction. Uh, they say if you conceive it and you believe it, you can achieve it. So this movie, it's a, it's a vintage movie that uh, I saw when I was about 17 years old. And can we see the, okay, yeah, there we go, great. And a silly little story, I mean, it's a lot of fluff, Jack Lemmon's first starring role, and a woman who's down and out, she's got so much money left, she's out of work and figures, if I get my name out there, and she bought a uh, billboard, if I get my name out there, then I'm gonna become famous and I'll make lots of money. So I watched that movie, just that once, and I thought, Whatever I do, I'm going to become the best at what I do and in Canada as a woman. And I put that out of my mind, the best, best known. I had no education, no training of any kind, no skill sets. Well, here I am, and I'm probably now the best known shoe shiner in the country, if not beyond. So how has it impacted your, your life on a personal level, your success? You know, you, you sort of gave me a heads up about that one. It's a tough one to call, mm -hmm. but being, I will say, being in such a, a different occupation, especially given gender, age, you put it all together. When I go out socially and if someone asks, what do you do, it becomes a topic of conversation. And I want to charge them $8 plus a gratuity just to tell the story at the very least yeah. because it, it is a curiosity. It has bolstered my confidence, so to a certain level, because it, it affected every aspect of my life. And so would your definition of success be different today than it may have been before you started uh, 
this company? Do you know, I, I can't, I thought of this on my way here. I mean, what is, people's definition of success mm. can be so different. Um, I have a roof over my head, money in the bank. I could be making more, and I've been criticized for not um, running my business in such a way that I make more, but it's, it's important to me that the people who work with me benefit right. the most. And so if I see them succeed, and this has helped them get along the way, because to work with you, to work, excuse me, to work with me, you must have other ambitions in life. I had to turn lemons into lemonade from my first year of running out of money. So I feel I've been successful when I see others succeed. And when I can pay my bills on time. <laughs> Very important, an important one. Well, Penny, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Our time is up, um, and I've truly enjoyed it. And I wish you all the best Thank with your you. company. And I'll be coming to see you with uh, uh, reams of shoes very soon. Yes, yes, you have to do that. Yeah. Keep them clean, and it's going to tell an awful lot about you to other people. Oh, and just for more information, so if anybody wants to find you on the website, your website is uh, Penny Loafers Shoe Shine company.com. That's right. And there are two S's in the middle. So. Two, with two S's. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, you are going to meet Jeanette Arsenault, who is a singer, songwriter, performing artist, and a woman with a big heart. So stay tuned. <laughs>